This is Catholic Challenge, a quiz show that tests your knowledge of the Catholic faith. From altar to zealot and amos to wimple, we've got the questions to test your mettle. Take up your shield and raise your sword. It's time to stand firm in the glory of the Lord. Are you up to the challenge? Catholic Challenge 2.0 is here. Are you ready? And now, here is your host, Barbara G. Hello and welcome to Catholic Challenge 2.0, an exclusive production of the Living Bread Radio Network. I'm your host, Barbara G., and with me today is my co-host, P.J. Chavez. P.J., great to see you. How are you doing? Very good to see you. I am fantastic. Thank you. Very good. Well, listeners, we're going to spend the next 30 minutes testing your knowledge of the Catholic faith. I hope you're up to the challenge. But before we get started, P.J., our listeners have to know the rules. So how about giving them the rules? Absolutely. Well, here are the rules. We will ask 10 multiple-choice questions in the first three rounds. Each correct answer is worth 10 points. For classroom, homeschooling, or team play, you can download our free scoring sheet at livingbreadradio.com. The fourth and final round is the challenge round. Now, this round increases the difficulty since no multiple choice answers will be provided, and each correct answer in that round is worth 30 points. Okay, PJ. All right, listeners, are you ready? We're ready to start round one. Question number one from Luke chapter 1, verse 26. Which angel announced the birth of Jesus to the Blessed Mother? Was it Gabriel, Raphael, or Michael? And the correct answer is Gabriel. In Luke, we read that in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin whose name was Mary. Question number two. Who has the primary responsibility for education of children? Is it the government, the school, or parents? And the answer is the parents. From the Catechism, number 2252, we learn that parents have the first responsibility for the education of their children in the faith, prayer, and all the virtues. Question number three. When he was 14, he was captured by Irish pirates during a raiding party and taken to Ireland as a slave. He is the patron saint of Ireland. His feast day is celebrated on March 17th. Is it St. Columba, St. Patrick, or St. Michael? And the answer is St. Patrick. St. Patrick was one of the early victims of human trafficking. Question number four. To whom does a person confess when going to the sacrament of reconciliation? Is it a deacon, a priest, or a nun? And the answer is a priest. From the Catechism number 1461, It says, bishops and priests, by virtue of the sacrament of holy orders, have the power to forgive all sins in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Question number five. In the Old Testament, who were the special people through whom the Holy Spirit spoke? The Canaanites, the shepherds, or the prophets? And the correct answer is the prophets. Every Sunday in the Nicene Creed, we declare that we believe that the Holy Spirit has spoken through the prophets. Question number six. In Acts chapter eight, an official of the queen, an Ethiopian eunuch, was reading the scriptures in his chariot. Which apostle joined him to explain the scriptures and baptize him? Is it James, John, or Philip? And the answer is Philip. Philip explained the scriptures to the eunuch and baptized him before disappearing. Question number seven. 
Which of these is the Cathedral of the Diocese of Rome, the official church of the Pope? Is it St. Peter Basilica, the Sistine Chapel, or St. John Lateran? And the answer is St. John Lateran. This archbasilica is actually considered the mother church of the Roman Catholic faithful. Question number eight, true or false? Men and women can both be ordained deacons in the Roman Catholic Church. And the answer is false. From the Catechism of the Catholic Church, 1577, only a baptized man validly receives sacred ordination. For this reason, the ordination of women is not possible. Question number nine, from Luke chapter 22. In what garden did Jesus pray that this cup may pass from him? Was it Eden, Galilee, or Gethsemane? And the answer is Gethsemane. Jesus had gone to Gethsemane often to pray. Judas knew that place well. And question number 10. This saint did not believe that Jesus rose from the dead when the apostles told him that they had seen the Lord. Jesus told him to place his finger in the nail holes. Was it Jude, John, or Thomas? And the answer is Thomas. Doubting Thomas is known for taking the gospel to India. All right, that wraps up round one. Great, PJ. We're going to take our first break. Uh, but before the break, we're going to leave you with a bonus question worth 25 points. And the question is, St. Joseph of Cupertino was known as the Flying Friar. How did he get this nickname? We'll give you the answer when we come back. You're listening to Catholic Challenge 2.0 on the Living Bread Radio Network. St. Jerome said, Ignorance of Scripture is ignorance of Christ. That's why the Living Bread Radio Network opens up the Scriptures each and every day with their podcast, Liturgy of the Word. You'll hear the daily Mass readings and reflection along with sacred liturgical music. Stay in touch with the Church with Liturgy of the Word podcast. Subscribe for free from your favorite podcast platform like Stitcher, Apple Podcast, or Podbean. You can even ask Alexa to play Liturgy of the Word. Welcome back to Catholic Challenge 2.0 on the Living Bread Radio Network. Hope you are scoring well in the first round. Uh, before we went to break, we left you with a question, and now PJ is going to give us the answer. Absolutely. The question is, St. Joseph of Cupertino was known as the Flying Friar, and why did he get this nickname? The answer is, St. Joseph of Cupertino, he was known as the Flying Friar because he often levitated. He was famous for his ecstasies, miracles, and for the gift of levitation that was reported by numerous eyewitnesses. All right, great. Hope you got that one right. That's a favorite saying of PJ's because he's a flyer. All right, we're ready to start uh, round two. Each of these questions is worth 10 points. Round two starts right now. Question number one. What Catholic organization founded during the Crusades is named for a small island in the Mediterranean Sea. Is it the Knights of Columbus, the Knights of Malta, or the Knights Templar? The correct answer is the Knights of Malta. Members of the Order of Malta traditionally belong to the aristocracy, but the emphasis today is more on a nobility of spirit and conduct. Question number two. What member of the Sanhedrin met with Jesus at night and spoke in Jesus' defense during his trial? Joseph of Arimathea, Nicodemus, or Bartholomew? And the answer, Nicodemus. Nicodemus assisted in the burial of Jesus providing 75 pounds of spices and helping wrap the body of Jesus to be laid in the tomb. Question number three. 
Before breaking with Rome over his divorce and remarriage, King Henry VIII received the title Defender of the Faith for his writing Defense of the Seven Sacraments. True or false? And the answer is true. This title is still used by King Henry's successor on the English throne. Question number four. The following quote comes from which book of the Bible? Love is patient, love is kind, it does not boast, it is not proud. Is it 1 Corinthians, 1 Peter, or Hebrews? And the answer is 1 Corinthians. You may remember hearing these verses from 1 Corinthians frequently at weddings. Question number five. This Old Testament figure was the youngest son of Jacob and Rachel. One of the 12 tribes of Israel bears his name. Joseph, Judah, or Benjamin? The correct answer is Benjamin. Benjamin's name means son of my days as an indication that he was born in Jacob's later years. All right, question number six from Acts 2, 4. What immediate effect did the outpouring of the Holy Spirit have on those gathered together on Pentecost? Did they get wet, speak in tongues, or fall over? And the answer is, they spoke in tongues. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Question number seven, true or false? For a couple's marriage to be a sacrament, it must be open to procreation and education of children. And the answer is true. Many people don't realize that children are the supreme gift of marriage and can contribute greatly to the good of the parents themselves. From, that's from the Catechism 1652. Question number eight. In the Litany of the Saints, we use the Latin phrase ora pro nobis. What does this phrase mean? Is it come Holy Spirit? Pray for us or Lord have mercy. And the answer is pray for us. This is the church's most ancient litany, dating back to at least the fourth century. Question number nine. What gesture made by the bishop during the sacrament of confirmation symbolizes the transmitting of the Holy Spirit? Is it the sign of the cross? laying on of hands, or slap on the cheek. And the answer is laying on of hands. Actually, the slap is intended to be a reminder that one must be ready at all times to suffer for the faith. And question number 10. What animal did Noah first sent out from the ark to find land, and it never returned? Is it a dove? a raven, or a sparrow? And the answer is a raven. A raven flew back and forth until the waters had dried up. Okay, that ends round two. Uh, we're going to take our second break. I hope you're doing well in your questions. I want to remind you also that uh, you can download our free scoring guide. Uh, just go to livingbreadradio.com. You can play on your own or you can play in groups, play in teams, uh, and have a lot of fun playing together. So go to livingbreadradio.com and download the free scoring sheet. Uh, we're going to take our second break, uh, but before we take our break, we're going to leave you with another bonus question worth 25 points. And here's the question. Medieval piety developed the praying of the rosary as a popular substitute for what other prayer? 
We'll give you the answer on the other side of the break. Don't go anywhere. You're listening to Catholic Challenge 2.0 on the Living Bread Radio Network. It's one of a kind, and it's available anywhere, anytime. From sacred hymns to contemporary favorites, it's great Catholic music. Listen at greatcatholicmusic.com, download the free app, or ask any Alexa-enabled device to play great Catholic music. Draw closer to our Lord and through beautiful music. It's the perfect way to listen at home with your family, at work, in the car, or during your daily devotions. Make your day blessed with great Catholic music. All right, welcome back. You're listening to Catholic Challenge 2.0 on the Living Bread Radio Network. We took our break, and before we went to break, we left you with a question, a bonus question worth 25 points. PJ, let's give the listeners the answer. All right. Medieval piety developed the praying of the rosary as a popular substitute for which of these prayers? And the answer is the Liturgy of the Hours. The rosary was developed in the Middle Ages precisely as a substitute for those who did not have the books for the Liturgy of the Hours. Yeah, and the people were illiterate then, so right. 150 psalms and 150 uh, Hail Marys for the rosary. So. <laughs> That's right. Okay, um, we are going to move into round three, uh, and let's do it now. Here's question number one. This is the name of a spring Fed pool at Jerusalem where Jesus cured the paralytic in the Gospel of John chapter 5. It is also the name of many modern American hospitals. Is it Capernaum, Bethesda, or Caesarea? And the correct answer is Bethesda. The name Bethesda means either House of Mercy or House of Grace. Hence, it is a very good name for hospitals. Question number two. This is the name of the official representative of the Pope to a capital of a foreign government. Usually, he is a cardinal. Is it nuncio, abbot, or diplomat? And the answer is nuncio. A nuncio is appointed by the Holy See and is head of the apostolic nunciature, which is the equivalent of an embassy. Question number three. Who were Shem, Ham, and Japheth? Were they the three wise men, Noah's sons, or the men in the fiery furnace? The answer is Noah's sons. As sons of Noah, these three men essentially are the ancestors of all the people on the earth. Question number four. This saint saw visions of the Blessed Virgin Mary at Lourdes, France. Was it Saint Jacinta, Saint Bernadette, or Saint Catherine Labore? And the answer is St. Bernadette. It was at Lourdes that the Blessed Mother told St. Bernadette, I am the Immaculate Conception. Question number five, true or false? It is permissible for a Catholic to become a member of a Masonic Lodge. True or false? And the answer is false. Many popes have spoken against the Masons throughout the centuries, even as recently as Benedict the 16th. All right, question number six. Which saint is credited with creating the first manger or nativity scene? Is it St. Francis of Assisi, St. John of the Cross, or St. Jerome? And the answer is St. Francis of Assisi, St. Francis was inspired to create the nativity scene after visiting the Bethlehem cave of Jesus' birth. Question number seven. What is the first sorrowful mystery of the rosary? 
Is it the crucifixion, the agony in the garden, or the scourging at the pillar? And the answer is the agony in the garden. The other sorrowful mysteries are the scourging at the pillar, the crowning with thorns, the carrying of the cross, and the crucifixion. Question number eight. In the book of Exodus, who went with Moses to ask Pharaoh to let the Israelites go? Is it Korah, Aaron, or Joseph? And the answer is Aaron. Pharaoh was extremely hard-hearted, refusing to release the Israelites as all the people suffered through the plagues sent by God. Question number nine. Pope Francis is originally from which country? Is it Argentina, Germany, or Italy? And the answer is Argentina. Pope Francis is the 266th Pope and the first one from the Americas. Question number 10. Who spoke these words to the Virgin Mary when she and St. Joseph presented Jesus in the temple? A sword shall pierce your soul. Was it Simeon, Anna, or Joseph? And the answer is Simeon. The purification of the mother and the presentation of the baby were traditionally done 40 days after the birth of the baby. All right, moving right along, we're wrapping up uh, round number three. We want to remind you, listeners, that uh, you can also podcast a Catholic Challenge. Uh, you can listen on Google and on Alexa. So you can do it all hands-free, uh, listening to uh Catholic Challenge 2.0 and uh, Learning the Faith. We're going to take a break, uh, our third break, and but before we go, we're going to leave you with another bonus question worth 25 points. And the question is this, this Sunday feast is the last Sunday of the liturgical year. We'll give you the answer right after we come back. You're listening to Catholic Challenge 2.0 on the Living Bread Radio Network. For 15 years, the Living Bread Radio Network has been proclaiming the truth of Jesus Christ, and our programs, podcasts, and videos have connected with you and countless numbers of the faithful in Northeast Ohio and around the world. Each day, we continue our commitment to share the gospel message, and we count on you to make that happen. Your support is invaluable and makes a difference. Go to livingbreadradio.com and click the Donate button. Be part of the next 15 years at livingbreadradio.com. Thanks. Welcome back to Catholic Challenge 2.0. You're listening on the Living Bread Radio Network. Uh, we're getting ready to move into our challenge round, uh, but we left you with a bonus question worth 25 points right before the break, so PJ is going to give us the answer. Absolutely. This Sunday feast is the last Sunday of the liturgical year, and the answer is Christ the King. From Christ the King Sunday, we move right into the first Sunday of Advent. All right. Uh, you ready for the challenge round? This is a little bit harder now. Uh, PJ, let's give the uh, listeners the rules. It's a little bit different. Absolutely. The challenge round, the rules are this. The fourth and final round is known as the challenge round. This round increases the difficulty since no multiple choice answers will be provided. And each correct answer in that round is worth 30 points. All right. Here we go. The challenge round starts right now. Question number one. After his resurrection... Jesus appeared to the two dejected disciples on the road to this city. He stayed with them, and they recognized him in the breaking of the bread. And the city is Emmaus. From Luke 24, the disciples implored Jesus, Stay with us, Lord, for it is almost evening. Question number two. When a conclave meets... To select a new pope, they meet in this part of the Vatican. And the answer is the Sistine Chapel. 
The first conclave was held in the Sistine Chapel in 1492. Question number three. What Marian Holy Day of Obligation is always celebrated during Advent? And the answer is the Immaculate Conception. The Immaculate Conception means that Mary was conceived in a normal way, but without original sin. That's what Immaculate means, without stain. Question number four. Name the three apostles who witnessed the transfiguration of Jesus. And the answer is Peter, James, and John. His face did shine as the sun, and his garments became white as snow, according to the Vulgate. Question number five. What is a requiem mass? A requiem mass is a mass for the dead. A requiem mass is also known as a funeral mass, a mass of Christian burial. The final question. All right, question number six. The prophet Jonah was sent to this Assyrian city to save it from destruction. And the answer is Nineveh. Jonah actually tried to run away to Tarshish, so he would not have to take God's warning to Nineveh. All right, exciting, PJ. That wraps up the match. I hope you listeners scored well today. Uh, we always learn new things uh, every day about Jesus and his church, and if you keep listening to Catholic Challenge 2.0, you'll learn every time you play. Uh, we enjoyed uh, having the match today. Join us again next time on the Living Bread Radio Network for another edition of Catholic Challenge. I'm your host, Barbara G. for PJ Chavez. Thanks for joining us. Praised be Jesus Christ. You've been listening to Catholic Challenge 2.0, a production of the Living Bread Radio Network in Canton, Ohio. For a podcast or archive of this program, go to livingbreadradio.com and join us next week for another edition of Catholic Challenge 2.0.